You're watching the Business English webinar series brought to you by Human English. You can find podcasts and videos of these lectures online at humanenglish.com. It means to have a formal discussion with someone in order to reach an agreement with them. Okay. The government has refused to negotiate with the strikers. Okay, so here we have negotiate with. I'm negotiating for a new contract. Negotiating for. I've managed to negotiate a 5% pay increase with my boss. So again, it's negotiate with. Okay, so negotiate is a verb. Okay, we also have an adjective, it is able to be discussed or changed in order to reach an agreement. Everything is negotiable at this stage. I'm ruling nothing out. Okay, so we have negotiable. Okay, and it can also be a noun, the process of discussing something with someone in order to reach an agreement with them. The agreement was reached after a series of difficult negotiations. The exact details of the agreement are still under negotiation. Negotiation for the pay increase is likely to take several weeks. Okay, so negotiate can be a verb, it can be an adjective, and it can be a noun. Okay, and we can use it in different prepositions. Okay, it's also important to know the type of negotiator. Okay, a negotiator is a person. It's someone who tries to help two groups who disagree to reach an agreement with each other. It's usually a job, okay? So the person has to be skillful. Some very skillful negotiators will be needed to settle this dispute, okay? Okay, so just write in the chat box now if you have ever been a negotiator? Okay, you can just write yes or no if you have been a negotiator. Okay, I see many of you have been a negotiator. Right, so you may have been a negotiator in work, or sometimes we even can be a negotiator in our personal life, okay? But um, some of you may be familiar with what it takes to be a negotiator. You need to be skillful and you need to have some tactics or strategies, okay? So let's look at the vocabulary that we will be seeing throughout the webinar. Negotiate, okay, this is the verb. Negotiate terms, terms are the conditions. You negotiate for something, so you might negotiate for a pay rise, okay? Negotiation is the noun. Something could be under negotiation, like the details of the contract. Negotiator is the person. You always should be a skillful negotiator, and you need to learn some negotiation negotiating tactics or strategies. Okay, I'm going to read now a text and I just would like you to listen and then you're going to make some notes of any expressions or words that you hear and you can put that in the chat box. Okay, so listen carefully and then make a note of some expressions or words you hear and you can write them in your chat box. Okay, negotiation is the process of coming to terms and getting the best deal possible for your company, your department, or yourself. Negotiations involve a conflict of interest. Sellers prefer a high price to a low one, and buyers a low one to a high one. What one side gains, the other side loses. And this conflict has to be managed if a friendly atmosphere is to continue. After all, both sides will probably meet again 
and no one likes to feel they have lost. Another important feature of negotiations is that they take part in an atmosphere of uncertainty, where neither side really knows what the other wants or will give. Okay, so just write down some expressions or words that you picked up or you heard when listening. Okay, right. Okay, we have terms. Okay. Process. Uncertain atmosphere. That's very good. Okay, Gunter. Mm-hmm. Right. Ruth mentioned skillful. Okay, that's very good. Okay, all of the words that you mentioned are important words in the language of negotiating. Okay, so let's take another look here. Okay, negotiation is the process of coming to terms and getting the best deal possible for your company, your department, or yourself. Negotiations involve a conflict of interest. Sellers prefer a high price to a low one, and buyers a low one to a high one. What one side gains, the other side loses, and this conflict has to be managed if a friendly atmosphere is to continue. After all, both sides will probably meet again, and no one likes to feel they have lost. Another important feature of negotiations is that they take part in an atmosphere of uncertainty, where neither side really knows what the other wants or will give. Okay, so you can see some important words, coming to terms. Coming to terms means to agree or to accept. Okay, you always want to try to get the best deal, the best agreement or the deal for you, but there may be some conflict of interest. Okay, there may be some conflict of the interest to your party because both parties want to gain. Okay, all right, but often one side gains and the other loses. And what's key to remember is that there's often an atmosphere of uncertainty. Okay. So we can see here the process of negotiating. Okay. Now we're going to look at some types of negotiation. There are different types. And we can also find negotiations in most areas of our life. Okay, we can negotiate in our everyday activities as well. Okay, so we're going to look at these, and you want to see if you can try to decide what type of negotiation this could be. So what do you think this phrase, if you wash the dishes, I'll clean the bathroom, which area of life this could be? Right, that's good, Olga, this would be in a family. Okay. Right, and Gilmer said personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one, if you've done all of your homework by the end of the week, I'll take you to see Arsenal. Okay, right, Olga, Sergey, many of you wrote family, right. Okay, so Arsenal. Um, if, if you're not familiar with that, is a, it's a football, football or a soccer team. So this is probably something between um, a father and a son, okay, in the family atmosphere. I'll give you 200 oral for it if you throw in the trash helmet. Okay, that's good, Gilmar. Commercial, right. Okay, that's correct. Yes, yeah, so it would be in a commercial situation um, or in a, in a business situation or in a shop. Okay, somebody could be buying um, a helmet. Okay, and then if you increased your order, we'd give you a better price.
Okay, that's good, right? Okay, Klaus said commercial, and uh, we also have all the trading, yes. Okay, this could be as a business person, the business situation. Okay, it could be a supplier and a customer, okay, but it would be a commercial or trading situation. Okay, so you can see now the pictures. This one would represent the first example in a family situation. This second one would be related to the second phrase, related to the football game. Third one is related to the motorcycle with the crash helmet. And finally, we have the business negotiation at the end. Okay, today we are going to focus on the business negotiations, and we're going to look at different types of business negotiations. Okay, there are different types of business negotiations. Okay, the first one is a business negotiation can be similar to a discussion between friends fixing a social engagement. Two parties have a shared objective to work together in a way which is mutually beneficial. Proposals and counterproposals are discussed until agreement is reached. Both sides hope for repeat business. This is an agreement-based negotiation. Okay, so this one has a special name. Does anybody know what this type of negotiation is? Okay, it's a negotiation where both parties get what they want. Both parties are going to get what they want. Okay, it has the name and it's called, right, that's very good, Gunther and Klaus. Right, both of you have uh, gotten the correct answer. It's a win-win negotiation, right. And this is... Um, most cases in business hope for this type of negotiation. They would like a win-win. Both parties want to get what they want, okay? However, it doesn't always happen, and there are two other types of negotiation that are less founded on mutual benefits, but on gaining the best deal possible for your side. This means that each team thinks only about its own interests. In this type, a seller typically seeks to sell a product, but is less concerned about repeat business. Okay? If you know the name of this type, you can put it in the chat box. Okay, so in this type of negotiation, you're only interested in selling your product. Uh, your, your concern is your only interest, and you're not really concerned about doing more business. Okay, well, this type of negotiation is called an independent advantage, okay, because you're just looking out for yourself. And finally, we have a third type of negotiation to resolve conf conflict, for example, in a contractual dispute. Here it is possible that each party regards the other as an opponent and seeks to win the argument. Okay, so in this type of negotiation, it's usually in a contract. An example could be like in a divorce. One party wins and the other loses. Okay, so there's one party that's winning and the other loses. Okay. Right. Okay, that's very good, Coletta. Mm -hmm. It's called a win-lose negotiation. Okay, so these are really the types of negotiations we have in business, um, but ideally in a business situation we would like to have a win-win negotiation. Okay, now the negotiation has a process. There are different stages to the negotiating process. There's bargaining, preparation, closing, and opening. Okay, I'd like you to just think about that and maybe write in the chat box the order that you think this would happen. What do you think the order of the negotiation process is?
Okay, that's very good. Okay, many of you have indicated the correct order, right? Okay, so the correct order is first the preparation. Okay, so preparation is first. You need to prepare for the negotiation. This is then followed by the opening. So you need to make an opening statement. The bargaining, where you're going to try to negotiate the terms and conditions and reach a settlement. And then finally, the closing, where you're going to try to make a deal. Okay? So as you can see, this is the stage. They are color-coded in different colors so that you can clearly see what part of the process we will be talking about. Okay. Here we have some phrases and expressions in the negotiating process. And we're going to see if we can match it together with the stage of the negotiation. Okay? So the first one is setting objectives or specifications and deciding on a negotiating strategy. So which part of the negotiation stage would that be? You can just type that in the chat box. Okay, that's good. Okay, Gunter Klaus. Right, preparation. Okay, so that is the preparation. B is revealing the initial bargaining position to your opposite numbers. Which part of the negotiating process is this? Okay, well, right, actually, right, Coletta, that's very good. Actually, this would be the bargaining, and in this part would be in the bargaining stage, okay, because you're getting your bargaining position. So that's very good, Coletta. Okay, next, trying to probe the weaknesses of the other side's case and convince them that they must change their position and move closer to yours. Right, class, that would be one. Bargaining. This would also be bargaining. Right. Okay. So you have to remember that some of them could be the opening and the bargaining. It's a fine line between the two, as um, Sergey pointed out. The second one, revealing the initial bargaining position, it's, it's for the end of the opening and the beginning of the bargaining. So it's a fine line between the two. Okay, so that's a good point. Okay, we also have um, trying to probe the weaknesses. That would be in the bargaining stage. Okay, next we have checking that your position holds good in the light of information received from your opponents and their reactions to your case. Which part of it? Purpose negotiation stage, okay. Okay, well this will be still toward the this will still be in the bargaining stage, okay? Because you're checking your position. So again it's still in the bargaining stage. Okay. Then we have judging whether the other side is determined to stick to their position or will settle for a compromise. Okay, right, this is also bargaining. Okay, so you can see a lot of bargaining. And then finally, making final moves and establishing any trade-offs in order to lead to a settlement. This is the final moves, right. Okay, everybody got that one correct, it is the closing. Okay, so as you can see, the majority of the talking time is in the bargaining. Okay, the bargaining part of the negotiating process takes up a large part of this negotiation process. There is usually a short opening and a short closing, but the bargaining is very important. And in the closing, it's very important to finally make the deal or not. Okay, we will be looking at each part of the process one by one. Okay, we're going to first start off with the preparation. 
Okay, this is some tips and advice for preparing for your negotiation. Okay, you need to identify your minimum requirements. Okay, that means you have to identify the least amount that you're going to accept. Prepare your opening statement. Decide what concessions you could make. Okay. Okay, if we look back here, concessions. Okay. Does anybody know what the word concession means? This is a very important part of negotiating, making concessions. Okay. Okay, well, a concession, mm -hmm. okay, that's good, Gunther, what you could give away. And Gilmer also gave a good example, limits that can be acceptable during negotiation process. All right, okay, that's a good definition. Okay, concessions are a thing that is going to be granted or accepted. Okay, that means you give something to get something back. And you need to make concessions in order to move ahead and reach an agreement. Okay, so for example, you may give a hundred products to somebody and then they will get a discount. Okay, so you give something to get something back as a concession. Okay, another tip is to know your own strengths and weaknesses, to know your role as part of the team. To prepare your negotiating position, it's important to know your aims and objectives. And of course, to prepare any figures, calculations, or support material you may need. Okay, that's important to have everything prepared and ready. Okay, and here again we see the negotiating process. Preparation, opening, bargaining, and closing. Okay, we're going to look now some reasons for preparing. So you're going to match each of the four aspects of good preparation and the reasons why they are important. Okay. Okay, let's look at the first reason. Okay. We have knowing your aims and objectives, knowing your own strengths and weaknesses, preparing any figures, calculations, and other materials, and preparing an opening statement. Okay, these are the four aspects of good preparation. So what Shawan would go with means you can support your argument. Right, that's very good, Olga. Okay, you prepare your figures. Okay, figures and calculations and materials, that's going to be used to support your argument. Okay, right. Okay, which one is going to help to clear thinking and define the purpose? It's going to define the purpose. Okay, that's very good, Coletta and Klaus, right? Know your aims and objectives. Okay, it's going to know your aims and objectives. Okay. Creates reasonable expectations. Okay, excellent, right, Olga, B, okay, B would be expectations would be to know your strengths and weaknesses. You need to know what your good points are and your negative points are, okay, in order to create an expectation. And then finally, this helps you to know the context. Okay. Okay, that's very good, yes. Okay, preparing an open statement, B. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember all of the answers you can find on a PDF file with some of the slides and the information and the vocabulary. will all be in on a PDF file for you to be able to review. Okay. Okay, so this is preparation, and it's very important to be well prepared for your negotiation. Okay, we're going to move on now to the opening. 
And the opening is very important because it comes after the preparation and it's when you finally meet the other party and you sit down to discuss your and negotiate your situation. When you have an opening, it's also very important to start out with some small talk. Okay? Does anybody know what small talk refers to? What is small talk? Okay, that's good. Conversation, right? Klaus, Klaus uh, wrote a very good definition, talking about other things, and Coletta says getting warm. Yes, that's very good. We can use small talk to break the ice. We often say break the ice between two people or two parties. Okay, small talk is informal, casual conversation when you get to know another person or group of people. And it usually occurs before a meeting or a negotiation. Right. That's very good, Sergey. It's to develop the rapport between the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is an example of small talk. Okay. And um, would, would there be any volunteers that would like to um, read a part of the small talk? So if, you have, if I have any volunteers that would be interested to read a part of the small talk, they could just put yes in the chat box. Okay. Seems okay. If anybody would like to read it, you could just click yes on the chat box. Um, well, we don't seem to have any volunteers, so I'm just going to read it, and you can just listen to the dialogue. This is an example of a small talk between two people who are going to be starting a negotiation. Okay. Hello, Jose Mendez, sales manager for ICIP and my associate, Miguel Sousa. Very pleased to meet you. I'm David Moss, and this is my legal advisor, Sue Beacon. I hope you had a pleasant flight over. Yes, we did, thanks. Are you staying for a few days? Unfortunately, we need to get back to Lisbon tomorrow. Okay, so it's very informal conversation. Usually you talk about uh, the flight, your travel, any traveling, your trip, uh, maybe the city where you're staying, it's just some informal conversation to break the ice before the negotiating process begins. Okay. The next part of the opening is the opening statement. Okay, the opening statement is very important. Okay. And here we have an opening statement. Okay, so just listen to this opening statement and then Write down if you think this is too direct. You just write down yes or no if you think it is too direct. Mr. Moss, to start, up, to start off with, I just want to say we believe we can offer you a very good deal and come up with a win-win result. So do you think that is too direct? Okay. Okay, we have different answers from you. But if we look at that statement, it could be a little bit too direct. Okay? And it really varies from the culture to the culture. So it depends on the culture that you're living in. Okay? This may be too direct in some cultures. It's very important for you to know the other party's culture. If they have a direct style, for example, Chinese usually have a more direct style, and some other cultures expect people to be more polite, okay, such as the Northern Europeans, for example. So it's important to know the culture of the other party so that you do not offend them, okay? We can look at another example of an opening statement. Well, we better get down to business. Mr. North, to start off with, I just want to say we believe we can offer you a very good deal and come up with a win-win result. Okay, so this just might be a nicer, more polite way to say it. 
um, and this could be a little more polite. Okay? Okay. Now, when we do bargain, oh, okay, now the next uh, step in the process is bargaining. Okay, and this, as we said before, is the most important part of the negotiating process, and it also takes up um, a large part of the process. Okay, in the bargaining phase, we have two types of formats to use or two structures to use when we want to negotiate the terms. Okay, bargaining. In the bargaining phase, we need to negotiate and to agree on terms and conditions. And of course, we always want to get the best deal for ourselves. Okay. The first form is when we think the outcome is very likely. When you're sure of the outcome, then we can use the first conditional. Okay. You can see an example. If you give us a discount of 5%, we will place an order for 2,000 units. So we use this format if we are sure of the outcome and if we feel that we're in a strong position. When the outcome is less certain, when we're not sure, or if we want to be less direct. So if you want to be a little bit less direct and more polite, we would use the second conditional form. If you gave us a 10% discount, we would place a much larger order. Okay, or what discount would you offer us if we decided to go to another supplier? Okay, so it's also important to be careful of the structure that you use because it could change the tone of the negotiation. Okay, so again, you're going to use the first conditional if you are in a stronger position to be more direct, and you will use the second conditional, which is the second one, if you want to be more polite and less direct. Okay, so remember you will get this on the PDF file and you can take a look and review it then. Okay, in the bargaining phase, there is a lot of language that we can use to object to a point or offer. And these are polite ways to object if you're not happy with the offer. I'm just going to read through them. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. However, I'm prepared to compromise, but the way I look at it, the way I see things, if you look at it from my point of view, I'm afraid I had something different in mind. That's not exactly how I look at it. From my perspective, I'd have to disagree with you there. I'm afraid that doesn't work for me. Is that your best offer? Okay, so these are different expressions that you can use when you are not satisfied, you're not happy about the offer, or you're disagreeing about something. Okay? Okay. We also have some tips to use when you're bargaining. Okay? These are some tips to use when you're bargaining. And it's important to always have some good strategies and tactics to follow. So first of all, you should use words that will bring both parties together such as we, us, jointly together. So you want to indicate that you're going to work together with the party or the person. Okay, put the negotiation into the context of the market or environment you both work in. Okay, and then summarize the short-term and long-term objectives. Mention some of the variables in the negotiation to keep some of them up your sleeve for later. Okay, so you want to mention some but you want to keep others up your sleeve. Okay? What does that mean, up your sleeve? This is an idiomatic expression. And to keep something up your sleeve. Anybody know what that means, up your sleeve?
Okay, I have some good answers, right? Okay, so Gilmar and Ruth made some good suggestions. But actually, up the sleeve um, means to keep it in this in a secret. In secret, it's like a secret strategy to use when the time is right. Okay, so that's a good um, some good examples, Klaus, to have something in the background, right? So whenever you keep something up your sleeve, it means to keep it in secret. Okay, and then you'll tell the other party or the person when the time is right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. Okay. All right, we also have Coletta who wrote uh, in German the meaning. So that's very interesting. Okay. Um, and then finally, the last tip would be to remind your partner what is important to them and what is important to you. Okay. Okay, so the bargaining is a very important phase, um, and this is where you're going to try to negotiate the terms and conditions of the deal. Okay. And finally, we move on to the closing. And the closing is when we're going to see if we can make or break the deal. OK. Here are some expressions that we use when we close negotiation. Well, I guess that about wraps it up to wrap up. OK, wrap up means to start closing or ending the negotiation. OK. Do you think we could have that in writing by the end of the week? Great. I'll get my secretary to fix the next meeting for as soon as possible. Can I just go over what we've discussed again? OK. So the goods will arrive by Friday, as we agreed. Have I missed anything out? Were there any final questions before we finish? I look forward to doing business with you again soon. Okay, this is a very polite and a nice way to end a discussion or a negotiation. I look forward to doing business with you. Thank you for coming all this way on such a cold morning. Okay, this is also good to thank the other party. And to sum up, the supplies will be at a two point. 5% discount as compared to the last order. Okay, so another way to say to sum up would be to conclude, or we can say in conclusion. Okay, and this is where you can put some of the points that were discussed and sum it up briefly. Okay. Okay, you're just going to listen now, and I'm going to be speaking about three important things that you need to do when you close a negotiation. So try to listen to the three verbs, the three important things that you need to do when closing a negotiation. And then you can just write them in the chat box. Okay. Before making or accepting a proposal, you need to summarize where both parties have come from. You also need to evaluate the present position of both. And you will need to persuade your partner in negotiation that one way or another it is in their interest to make a deal with you. Okay. So what are the three things that you need to do? OK, right. I'll said to summarize. And Coletta, summarize, evaluate, and persuade. That's very good. Excellent. OK. So the three things that are important to do in closing the negotiation is to summarize, to evaluate, and to persuade. OK. So I'll just read this over again. Before making or accepting a proposal, you need to summarize where both parties have come from. You also need to evaluate the present position of both. And you will need to persuade your partner in negotiation that one way or another, it is in their interest to make a deal with you. And those are the three things you need to do in the closing. OK, we're going to take a look now. Here is the process again. And we're going to take a look at a closing statement. And this is an example of a closing statement to finish off. OK, great. 
we agree on prices, discounts, the items you want to buy, delivery, and method of payment. I'll send you an email confirming what we have agreed and attach an invoice. Okay, so this is a good closing statement. It summarizes what they've agreed on. And there's also an indication that there will be an email of confirmation. Okay, sometimes in negotiation we also have to attach an email, we have to send an email and possibly an invoice. Okay, and an invoice, uh, what is an invoice? Does anybody know what an invoice is? Okay. Okay, we have different answers here. Well, just to clarify, that's good, Klaus and Bill. Okay, some of you may know, may not know. An invoice is actually it's it's like a bill, um, and it's a document issued usually by the seller to the buyer, which is going to indicate the product, the price, and the conditions that were agreed on, such as the delivery and the method of payment. Okay, so if you purchase something or buy something, the supplier will send you an invoice and all of the terms and conditions of the negotiating or the negotiation or the agreement will be in it. Okay, so it's similar to like a bill. Okay, so this is a good example of a closing statement. And when you close a negotiation, we have some language to accept the proposal. And let's take a look at some of the language when accepting a proposal. It sounds like we've found some common ground. I'm willing to leave things there if you are. Let's leave it this way for now. I'm willing to work with that. I think we both agree to these terms. I'm satisfied with this decision. I think we should get this in writing. I'd like to stop and think about this for a little while. You've given me a lot to think about or to consider. Would you be willing to sign a contract right now? Let's meet again once we've had some time to think. Okay, so this is different language to use when you want to accept. Um, and you can see that in some cases they want it in writing or they want to set an appointment to meet again. Okay. All right, and this is a nice way to close negotiation. Finally, in the closing, after you have closed negotiation, it's important also to formalize the agreement or the negotiation. Okay, there are different ways to formalize the agreement. Okay, you can just write in the chat box if there's a way that you know of formalizing it. Okay, is there anything that could make it more formal or official at the end of the negotiation? Okay, it's very good. Gunter contract, right? Mm-hmm, collect a set of contracts, mm-hmm. That's good. Okay, yes, the contract is the best way, because that means it's something that is in writing and it is formal, okay? And also a letter of intent. That's very good, Gunter, a letter of intent. We'll also see that in a few seconds. Okay, so there are different types to formalize the agreement. And in most business negotiations, it is a good idea to get something down in writing. Even if a decision has not been made, a letter of intent to continue the negotiations is often used. This is a way for each party to guarantee that talks will continue. A letter of intent often outlines the major issues that will be discussed in any future negotiations. Okay, so the letter of intent is a letter which will indicate that the talks will continue in the future. Okay, so it's the positive way to formalize the agreement. 
Okay. In some cases, a confidentiality agreement is also necessary. This is a promise from both parties to keep the information private between the discussions. Okay. So when an agreement has been decided, a formal contract can be made. On the other hand, depending on the level of trust, a simple handshake and verbal agreement may be all this is needed. Okay. So sometimes you may have a handshake and a verbal agreement, or you may have a formal contract. Okay. But also it's important sometimes to make sure that the information is kept private. So you may have to sign a confidentiality agreement. Okay. And however, even if nothing is put formally in writing, it is wise to send an email or letter that verifies the terms and puts the agreement on record, especially when a specific number is decided on. Okay, so in any case, it's always a wise decision to get something in writing. Okay, okay. so as you can see, these are the four stages of the negotiating process. We have looked at the preparation, the opening, and the bargaining and closing. And usually at the closing, it's very important because this is the point where we can see if you made the deal or you broke the deal. Okay? So it's always a good idea to make the deal. Okay. So I'd like to thank you for your participation. Thank you for answering the questions and participating. And are there any questions? Okay. All right. So any questions, again, write us at this email, support at humanenglish.com. You can also go to the website, www.humanenglish.com, and that will have any other information. It will also give you information about our future webinars and information about our online business classes. And the second session for the negotiation, negotiating webinar will be held next week. So you can find that information on the website. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Have a nice night. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next webinar. Goodbye.